Okay, so um, hello everyone. So we are very we want to apologize for the loss in transmission. Um, maybe because of Twitter issues, we've been having glitches. So far, so good today. Uh, we want to apologize for the break in transmission. Um, but we'll be rounding up. We're almost done, and we need to wrap up. Um, Amid is on stage to speak, and um, okay, uh, maybe because we need to wrap up as soon as possible. Uh, we always plan for our Yoruba no spaces to be three to four hours. We want to make it as informative as informative as possible, and we want to make it as educative as possible. You can share to a lawyer for a lot of your friends to come in. Um, we are so sorry. It's because of the network issues. So once that's why we even don't want to host long spaces uh, for more than eight, 10 hours and um, so that um, we are not going to be having breaks in between this way. And a lot of our listeners are not going to uh, uh, to be to be bored. Um, Amit, do you have anything to say? Amit, Amit Walker. Amit Walker. Yeah, good evening, Ari. Good evening, sir. Yeah, I don't have anything to say. Good for evening, now. sir. Yeah. Do you have anything to say? Do you have anything to say? Yeah, I said I, I don't have anything to say for now. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, proudly, Rono. No, 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 I know, I noticed the uh, the uh, short uh, network issue, so I just came back. Yes. For now, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So, um, well, okay, what about the host? Do you have anything to say? Oh, Hello. So thank you very much for the for the space. I really like this topic today because it brought us back to the reason why we come here every time. I think that uh, what I wanted to add was people need to. There was a gentleman that was talking earlier. I couldn't get to address him before he left, and I think that I'm not sure whether he completely understood what we're advocating for. But regardless, I think it's very important to let people know uh, what exactly we're talking about when we talk about unitary system and when we talk about a restructured Nigeria and when we talk about this proof federalism. Because, because there's so much uh, terms and jargons, people tend to sometimes become um, confused about it and, and, and then they just muggle everything together. Essentially, what we are saying is that, you know, the way Nigeria is currently constituted, uh, it's not really in the best of anybody. And why some people get a little bit of relief here and there, when you look at the overall majority of the country, you see that it's not working. And uh, why is it not working? It's it's really because of the way it's structured. And just like I said in the beginning of this of this lecture, from if you watch the for, if you are in the first space, Nigeria was like um, almost like a uh, maybe a fight is what I would say between two ideology, a unitary ideology whereby everybody is kind of somehow mingled together. Uh, without any form of identity, and uh, a, a well, I don't want to say demarcated per se, because at the end of the day, it is one Nigeria. Everybody can go wherever they want. But it's more of a better structured Nigeria. So people like Obafemi Aolo and even to, to a large extent, Sadauna or Sokoto, when he made that statement, uh, Northern First, People take it that, oh, this is a, a racist statement. No, it is not a racist statement. What he was saying was that people, the, the country, 
needs to be structured in such a way that it is along the civilizational lines. That is what it's all about. So, but people that like to, people that did not, I, I want to say, maybe they didn't understood uh, the value of civilization building in a nation, or maybe they have their own agenda, depending on which book you're reading, you know, or maybe they were compromised with the British because it is obvious at onset what the British want. The British want the Nigeria that we have today. The Nigeria that doesn't have an identity. That is what they want. A Nigeria that is not uh, natural because you're trying to say that uh, there's no difference between uh, a Yoruba man and, uh, and, uh, and a Kanuri man. Whereas there is differences and those differences are not going to go away. You cannot wish them away. So why don't we structure the country along that? And it is not about um, a simplistic, it's not about a simplistic argument of, of race only or ethnic group only, because people that like to attack the position of ethno-linguistic federalism, they like to make it looks like it is just this simplistic approach of just looking at things from your own race alone. That's why they will say, oh, if you are only thinking about your, your ethnic group, uh, they have this fancy uh, statement that they used to run when election comes so that you don't vote, you don't vote for the best interests of your ethnic group. They will say, oh, your, your education is useless and things like this. But honestly, these are, those kind of things are just a way to deceive people. Because when we look at, if you go and look at people that have, that have, um, that have really take their time to study why those nations that are successful, why are they successful? What they told us is that they look at so many reasons why nations succeed, why a nation is great, why a nation is flourishing economically, socially, politically, militarily. And what they found, some of the things that they found is that the lower the level of uh, ethno-linguistic fractionalization in a country, the higher the success of that country. So people that speak the same language, that share the same culture, that have the same civilization, when they are in a nation, that nation tends to be more successful than people that are mixed together. These are evidence-based research. They're not just the uh, common talking research. And uh, there's so many resources out there, you can spend your time to go and study it. But I will tell you somebody that has took his time to do this, way back from before Nigeria started, that was Chief of Buffett Mawilo. If you watch the interview of his daughter recently, his daughter said that when they were doing the constitutional conferences, that a father, Chief Law said that he has studied the constitutions of, I don't know how many countries, maybe 15 or 20 different countries. And he found out that the most uh, effective constitution for a multicultural nation like Nigeria was a federal ethno-linguistic constitution. And that was why he was arguing for that. It's kind of amazing because everything he said that time uh, is still is the thing that is playing out right now. And the people that continue to promote this unitary system of Nigeria uh, that somehow suggests that uh, is a bad thing to even claim your ethnic identity, when you ask yourself, what is the benefit of the unitary system? I think it is going to be very hard for them to, to tell us that the unitary system worked. Because to date, it's only the regional system, which is kind of semi-federal system in Nigeria, that has demonstrated to be the most effective, whereby people had good life, they had a good quality of life, their socioeconomic um, numbers were good, the different regions were progressing. You know, it is a kind of quasi-federal system at the time, before it was completely broken down and now we have what we have today, which is the unitary system uh, that doesn't respect any uh, ethno-linguistic uh, civilization. And if anything, is trying to create this experiment whereby uh, everybody is just kind of mixed together. And um, 
uh, it would have it wouldn't have been a problem if it works you know if people are still able to have a decent life but i think it's uh, it's audible to the deaf and uh, glaring to the blind that it is not a system that works um People argue that we cannot go back to regional system due to so many reasons. Uh, call it regional system, call it whatever. What is obvious to me personally is that Nigeria needs to be restructured. And that restructuring needs to be in the linguistic uh, fractional fractions of the country. And uh, what people used to be afraid of, oh, there's, you're going to have so many pieces. It is not a, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because we've seen nations like Switzerland is the perfect example. You know, they're broken into so many cantons. Even that time when Aulo was writing his book, there was one of their cantons that had less than 500,000 people. And that particular place was an independent unit within a Switzerland. So you get to have your one Nigeria for people that, you know, believe that Nigeria should stay as one due to many reasons. Uh, if, if Nigeria didn't need to be one in the 60s when we're getting our independence, it definitely needs to be one in 2024. And in the, part of the reason is because the world has really uh, become very, very unsteady. Uh, there's wars, there's so many, there's money, stupendous amount of riches. It's now in the hands of even individuals. You know, people like Elon Musk is richer than a whole nation. So you can imagine what such a person can do uh, when they, if they're interested in your country. So there may be, there is a lot of benefits to Nigeria staying as one. But Nigeria can be one at the same time, still maintain uh, the individual identities of each ethnic group that, are, that is within it and prosper better whereby those groups can control their they can control their resources, they can dictate the future of their children, they will manage the educational curriculum, they would have the things that make them who they are. And at the same time, they can they will still be part of this Nigeria entity. So when when that is the case, you will have progress. Unlike now, somebody was saying, oh, um, in fact, if you want to go by Ajojo Dumbenikoni, it is the case that argues for uh, for restructuring the most. Because as it is right now, everybody is poor. That is what it is now in Nigeria. Everybody is poor. And there is no nation that doesn't have something that can make it to survive. Japan does not have any natural resources. That's what I've been, I've been told, I mean, what I've heard. But Japan is one of the top countries in the world. So to suggest that there is some people that somehow they are hopeless, and as a result of that, we must keep everything poor, everybody poor, so that some people don't feel poor, that's a very shallow uh, position to be. It's not a position that is coming from any tangible well-researched um, uh, kind of uh, point of view. So it's an interesting topic. Uh, I wish that we didn't have so much uh, in terms of disruptions, but I hope people we we take away the lesson, the, the information that we want to pass across. And uh, if anybody knows anything about the youth conference that they want to do, we, it would be nice to see what's uh, what that would be like, and if people, even TY members that are fall into the category of youth, if they will qualify to go to such a place, uh, it would be nice if it's an objective gathering and not some kind of selected, un unselected uh, group of youths that they are expected to come and rubber stamp something. Uh, if it can be objective, truly, maybe maybe you will have a chance, uh, but. I think Nigeria needs a new constitution that will reflect the people that are in it. I think Nigeria needs to restructure, and it needs to restructure along civilization lines, whether that's in form of creating more states or all these their regions, regions they're doing. Whatever it is, we have to be determined to do it. We have to be transparent in doing it. We don't need to hide and pretend in doing this. So. That's all I've got to say. Oh.
co-host. Co yeah, thank you very much. Um, I would love us to quickly wrap up. Like I said, we are not doing more than, um, unfortunately, due to network issues, we need to move on. That was a fantastic submission. Uh, Mr. Laleye is here and Eric Dan is here. Um, both of them will speak and we are going to be wrapping up and we are surely going to be meeting next week. Uh, Mr. Laleye. And we have book, book reading tomorrow. We are actually reading that uh, constitution, I can't remember the title of it. That was the book I all wrote about, yeah, Thoughts yeah. on the Nigerian Constitution, a very important book. So yes. join the room tomorrow. Too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Eka. So, Olale, how are you doing? Eka, le, ku, e ku nyo ju. Ah, ade, dupe kwe, at least, message nye, o ti ing pakule ti si de sa le bae. Onti mo konfe e so opo. On ta mani kwe, Nigeria is a country of ethnic nations. Any other argument, irony, Nigeria won't bring you all together as ethnic nation. So, everybody ni ko dile ba be mu. Ti, tenant ba wa si le yon, to rent le, ko le so fundan lo du, bo shima agbe nou liye, on to fe shele le ko last time niye, to lo ouje ko shele eventually. In your bay, politics the race look at how when you're back at the Danny a cabaret is back at the insane because number loom at the time you in your bay. Another thing to move a to focus glory, more way federal government seems to be doing something about it. State police in your not important at the restructuring that thing. So, but by a show, I show by yeah, long ethnic religions, I mean, ethnic. A uh, boundary new, which will be the best because Nigeria is purely an ethnic nation. Yoku, we run Yoku. Me, you go away, Nigeria Labour Congress, in ba Nigeria Bar Association, Jari, Kosheleri, is either a canoe is fighting Jokon or TV fighting this and that. Both in Shell, Lati Lenny, no, that's in Shell, Dollar. I was a full of I want to work back. Our, our one, they two are. Obo or ile Yoruba tin di IDP camp lo go go bit destabilization tin shele odo ti wa noro wa and if guy is not taking that we alter our demography going forward so those are the thing think ka koko bere si focus le lori pe look we need security amo mo pa won northern part na tin ba ito it gba ta won ti ri pe unitary police yo work ko work for anybody ko dele work Madrumbe, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. A shape of Paul, a good idea, Joe. Eric Dan, are you there? Uh, yes, 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 uh, yes. Uh, opinion about these issues, I just see that the Yoruba elites. We are the problem we have in the country because most of the the educated ones they have left politics for the uneducated ones for them to play it. They are not they seem not to be interested. All they do is to complain on social media. They don't want to be interested in the uh, the politics of how how the how the country works because they feel that uh, they can just uh, See, they, they can just say anything. All they need to do is just to speak. But you have to be in power for you to make the real change. Speaking on social media, composing the a, a piece to on social media is not the way forward. I have to look for other ways for the elites, the wise people, the educated elites, their professors, the people that have, the, 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 that are informed about how how to run a a, a a, a, a nation, how it works, for them to get involved in politics and for them to kick out these uh, uneducated people running our politics and uh, running to Abuja all the time to come and look for money. Every time you come to Abuja and share money and share money and share money, 
you are not you are not empowering anybody. You are just empowering your family and empowering your family. So, and uluwo kola ni utoshimewa utoshino lona. So, I think the whole essence is we have to get the right Yoruba people in, in the politics. Not all the so-called people that are calling themselves liberals. And at the end of the, the, the in the in the state of uh, say we want to we want to have liberals, we want to be liberal about everything. At the end of the day, we give our land to people, and at the end of the day, no benefits. The structure seems not to be working for anybody. The current structure of Nigeria seems not to be working for anybody. That's why I feel that we have to restructure Nigeria and we have to put the right people. The right Yoruba people in power, the conservatives are cha- the champion of the cause of Yoruba people. Speak for us, not this, not the ones that that will look, come to Abuja and uh, throw us under the carpet just for just for them to get a uh, a cut of the national cake. That is it. We have to let people that that know how to handle the economy, how to how to governize people. We have to let them. Sp- Speak for us, not these ones. That uh, these ones, in, the, I, I think the, the current ones in power now. I don't think they are they are, they are even doing well. Are speaking for the Yoruba people when it comes to national issues. I heard of a senator that was arguing about the structure in that say that uh, if you regionalize Nigeria, if you go back to regional government, that uh, it will allow this one to happen, it will allow that one to happen. We we'll have to go back to regional system of government because the current system we are running now is not working. It's not working. It's just a current a system where people, governors, at the end of the month, will come to Abuja and collect bags and go back to their state. And then before they even go back to their state, they will finish the money along the road. Self. So that's the system. Every month, at the end of the month, they will come to Abuja and share money. At the end of the month, how long are we going to come to Abuja to share money? How long are we going to continue to do? We want to generate our power. We want to generate our own, uh, our own, uh, our the I uh, uh, the VAT generated in the state. You give back to the state. You don't you don't generate VAT in Lagos State and use it to pay and uh, and use it to develop Kano. It's not possible. I I judge uh, I judge you uh, do be 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 pay I judge you do tell the company forget it. We have to develop our own region. That that's a myopic mindset. This is my opic mindset. We have to stop. We have to stop with this my opic mindset. That's that is the mindset that they use in defeating most, most of our people. So now that p- people are getting enlightened and people are this, this space, most of the reason why I join space is for me to listen to enlightened minds among the robots, not the one the for the so-called refrats, these also called fake politicians who don't know anything. Enlightened minds from the diaspora to speak. That is the people I want to hear to speak for the Yoruba people. Not uh, Agbero on the road and uh, maybe uh, find a way to get a fake uh, a degree. And at the end of the day, he's calling himself uh, honorable. So there's nothing honorable about that man that is uh, deceiving himself that he has joined politics. And he does not have anything in his head. He does not defend Yoruba. He does not speak for Yoruba. Yet... Oh, the only thing is just lies, lies, lies. Every four, four years, lies. And at the end of the day, when it's co- when it's time for election, we d- we call, we ask for the Yoruba conservatives to vote for them. When election is, is over, they will at the end of the day throw Yoruba conservatives under the carpet, all in the name of they want to be Libra. We cannot continue to take that again. We have to, we have to allow the Yoruba conservatives to take over government and let them speak for all the people in diaspora. Let them come come back join politics. I've heard people in diaspora speaking. Things that I've I've not heard from Niger- the average average Nigerian politician that call themselves honourable. These men are not honourable. They are dishonourable men. We have to let the honourable men that know how to how to how to run the country, how to run an economy, come in and let's take kick out the dishonourable men. Now. Thank you very much. That's my submission. Thank you so much, Eric Dan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Um, We'll be wrapping up in the next 10, 15 minutes. And uh, <coughs> sorry, let me um, play my throat. <coughs> um, we, it's been a wonderful conversation today. Um, and due to internet issue, we lost the room like um, two, three times. And we had to come back so that we can have a proper we can hear people's feedback. Uh, 
I would like to make some announcements. We have the Yoruba language class with TYF. If you are abroad and you want your children to learn how to speak Yoruba, kindly contact us on our website. Um, we'll be happy to engage you and uh, to enroll your class. The class has been running for the past two years, nonstop. So you think Yoruba First Organization as a language school for Yoruba people across all ages. We also have a Yoruba e-library where it is free of charge, um, where you can um, access our library and read books, educate your mind. Um, there's nothing we are doing that you can also not do. Um, please kindly engage and um, um, I try as much as possible to, to get across to get access to this library. Just go online, register on our website, and you can read as many books as possible. We also have an Awolowo Book Reading Club where we read books and uh, engage in intellectual conversations every Sunday. Um, tomorrow is 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. I will also be there by God's grace, uh, Isha and La to also engage in this conversation. Uh, what do we do in TYF? Think Yoruba first, because we need to continue to restate the objectives. Um, because we know we live in a very funny country where somebody says, I love Yoruba food. The next thing is you are by God, you are by God tree. And you are going to say, I'm um, 10,000, like 5,000, like uh, Rufai, Okwe Abati, we will be, we start seeing rubbish on Arise TV to start rubbishing everything you're saying. Um, that is the kind of country we live in as Yoruba people. Um, but because we live in this kind of a country, we need to be extremely careful and we need to be able to state our goals and objectives. I think Yoruba First Organization is a social cultural, social political organization that seeks unity of the Yoruba people across the 10 speaking Yoruba states, um, across in Nigeria. I'm talking about uh, from Kwara to Delta to Edo to Kogi and all the Yoruba speaking states in Nigeria and across West Africa and throughout the world. Um, we, we preach the Omolo values. We ensure that um, the rights of Yoruba people are protected anywhere behind the world. I will try as much as possible to preach the message of Awolowo. Uh, Awolowo is the father of modern Yoruba nation. Awolowo created Egbe Omodudua. And Egbe Omodudua united the Yoruba people into a formidable Yoruba powerful political bloc in Sub-Saharan Africa and West Africa. And um, this creation of a united political bloc in modern times in uh, colonial Africa um, was one of the reasons why uh, Inamdi Azikwe vowed the destruction of Egbe Murudua, including Awolowo. So um, we are putting this history out so that when people start asking questions, how we got here. So we do this every weekend and we are back after like a two, three weeks recess. And we promise to continue and bring to bring a powerful um, uh, uh, um, a program every Saturday in order to liberate our people. And we promise to be time conscious. And we also promise to put all our uh, platforms and all our programs uh, on um, podcasts. If you go on podcast and check Think Yoruba first, a lot of our lectures are now being uploaded onto all these platforms. We also want, we are going to upload a lot of our lectures on YouTube and a lot, and also that social media uh, platforms so that you can always go back, go to our YouTube, go to our podcast and listen to these lectures in order to liberate your mind and make sure that your mind is, uh, uh, is open. Um, people say, can Nigeria work? Nigeria can only work when it is restructured. If you like, bring A.J. Michael into Nigeria under this current structure. We are going to be wasting our time. We are going to be wasting our resources. 
Nigeria does not need a Messiah. We need to stop looking for Messiahs in Nigeria. What we need to understand is we need to build Nigeria that works. We need to have a Nigeria that is properly structured. We need a Nigeria that reflects the diversity of Nigeria. I remember when the new national anthem was started, it was uh, re, the old national anthem was brought back and the new uh, and the previous one when Arise of Copper Trust was taken out. Uh, I saw people like Ezekwe Sili saying all sort of uh, rubbish on social media where she was saying that, uh, oh, we should, we should not stop talking about tribe. You know, that is the issue um, about the empire builders in Nigeria. They, they need to eradicate ethnic identity in Nigeria. They want to destroy civilization. And there's nothing like a Nigerian civilization. It doesn't work. It, there's nothing, there's no Nigerian civilization. The British, the English learned that lesson the long, uh, after almost 800, 900 years of killing, burning people, you know, burning, killing a lot of people. Uh, they, they, they learned the hard way. The Catholics and the Protestants in Europe after killing themselves for close to 400 years, burning themselves alive, they understood that um, they just have to find a way to know that um, coexist one way or the other and uh, find a way to live together. And I think um, the Middle East, the Islamic world in the Middle East have not been able to figure how the Shiites and the Sunni will be able to pursue the same geopolitical uh, uh, reality within uh, within the within within the Middle East in the world. So we have to come to realize in Nigeria that the Aousa man is different from the Fulani man. The Fulani man is different from the from the Yoruba man. The Yoruba man is different from the Igbo man. Nigeria is like a United Kingdom. Um, we need to understand those facts. That is why you cannot rear peak in Zamfara. You know that's why you cannot drink. Uh, the alcohol in public in Kano. That's why you cannot wear a mini skirt in Shokoto. And all these little, little things matters a lot, you know. And why that is why federalism is extremely important in making sure that uh, different people with different civilization can coexist together in the same geopolitical or governmental framework. A uh, failure to do so. You are going to just be buying as much as possible. The, instead of having a negotiated unity based on mutual consent, you are going to be using blood, bloodshed, killing as much as possible to keep such unity. And um, that was what Lee Kwong Yu said. Um, if you really want to have a unity in a multi-ethnic country, you can achieve it through, through two ways. If you really want to achieve peace in Nigeria, we have two ways to. Maybe we're going to discuss this next week. Because I was even thinking about um, discussing the restructuring report of APC. Because APC has a restructuring report. And we need to discuss that restructuring report one after the other. Um, one after the, the uh, where we are going to criticize it, where we are going to accept it, you know, we need to actually be politically educated so that we are not. We are not going to become obedient that are busy cursing, insulting people on social media and when they actually do not have the mental capacity to actually express what they actually want in Nigeria. And the next thing we were hearing was that um, they want um, a state of origin to be destroyed because they actually don't know what they are doing. They are being used to be push the agendas, agenda of people that want to expand and build an empire within Nigeria. So. The, the, we need to understand what Nigeria is and how we can make Nigeria work for the rest, for everybody, for everybody. Lithium is, um, is the next gold of the world because the world is going towards renewable energy, building better batteries, you know, for, 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 for energy storage. It is more breakthroughs are coming in. That's why electric cars are, next, are the next big thing. And it is this mass production of all this new energy storage and making uh, um, uh, uh, oil and gas and all these things is, are becoming obsolete. And the northern part of Nigeria is full of all these mineral resources. The reality is 
are you going to be taking mining lithium in KB in Zamfara? Are you not going to be taking it to Abuja? And you think um, the people of Zamfara are so also not going to do what the people of Bayosa did by taking up arms against the Nigerian states? And they will say they are fighting for their resources. It's going to, it's already happening and it's going to happen. It's already happening and it's, and it's going to happen. So why should we continue to repeat the same mistakes in Nigeria? So we have the opportunity because we have a progressive in power in Abuja. We have somebody that listens in Abuja and we need to make our voice heard. We need to be strategic. We need to be intentional. I know a lot of people want different things, but one thing is the exclusive list needs to be unbundled. The exclusive list needs to be unbundled. The federal government of Nigeria has been controlling electricity. They've been controlling railway. They've been controlling um, uh, 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 food and medicine. They've been controlling oil and gas. They've been controlling all these things on the exclusive list for over 60 years. Can somebody tell me what the average Nigerian people benefited from this centralization? Absolute nothing. Absolute nothing. So when we talk about Nigeria is good, Nigeria is great. Nigeria is good, Nigeria is great because of what, have, what we are when we are the level of autonomy, where we are the resources to build wealth and greatness for our people at, the, at, at, our, at, our, at our different federating units. At our different federating units. We need to teach every Nigerian what federalism is all about. If you look at most field countries in Africa, most of them don't practice federalism. All the African countries that are at war, they are practicing centralization. African countries that are failed do not respect the ethnic differences within those countries. That's the reality of Africa. Go and look at every African country in the sub saharan Africa, from Sudan to Mali. They believe everybody should be melted in together. What did they do? They ended up killing themselves. They ended up killing themselves. And that's why I said we have a lot of lunatics amongst us, hardliners, that will be happy to let Nigeria go into war. And they'll be saying, Ajoje, Ajoje will do. Also, all those rubbish, all those nonsense statements. They cannot even conceptualize the reality we find ourselves. They would rather be buying bullets and be, and be clapping when their fellow Nigerians are killed. You know, I'm, anytime I see Nigerian soldiers killing Boko Haram, I'm not happy because they're Nigerians. I see the Nigerian government killing IPOB, they're Nigerians. We need to ask ourselves the question because we cannot continue. That was what happened in Sudan, in Ethiopia. I'm going to give a good example of Ethiopia before we close the room. Ethiopia, um, was a country uh, that um, runs like a kind of a regional system of government. That's why I've been telling people that regional system of government does not solve anything. Before, Ethiopia used to be a monarchy. And uh, El Salasi, who was Amara, was the king of you know, Ethiopia, who was ruling Ethiopia with an iron fist, wiping out as many people as um, killing Somalis, killing Oromia in order to keep Ethiopia as well. Later on, some people felt um, the problem of Ethiopia was to reach the, the monarchy. Oh, it's a corrupt elite. They destroyed Ethiopia. They were in Megisu, the communists invaded Ethiopia, you know, and they, they, they declared war and destroyed, uh, killed many of the royal family and took over Ethiopia. You know, Megisu <laughs> further bastardized Ethiopia. Later on, it in Grias, from the northern part of Nigeria, from of, of Ethiopia, invaded Addis Ababa, and they took over power. And they consolidated power and said, oh, we are going to stop corruption in Ethiopia and everything. To come to the chase, you can have a regional system of government, but the control of the resources will still be centralized. Ethiopia is a good example. So what happened between 2020 and 2024 in Ethiopia was because of a struggle for power and resources in Ethiopia. 
because the Tigrans wanted to continue to be in power, but there was a kind of a mass uh, uprising, and the half Oromo, half Amara gained, got into power in Ethiopia, and the Tigrans were pushed out of Ethiopia, of Addis Ababa. So what did they do? You know, what happened in Ethiopia was that the entire Ethiopia ganged up to fight Tigrans. It was a brutal war. The population of the Tigray people is just 6 million people. And 1.5 million Tigrays, more than 1 million Tigray people were wiped out in one year. This happened just two years ago in Ethiopia. So the entire the militants, Amara militants, Oromia, everybody ganged up on Ethiopia, on, um, on, on Tigray, on that piece of region, that land, starved them to death until the African Union came in and did a kind of a, uh, of a negotiated peace. Do you know what happened? After negotiating peace, and every, the Amara people were now saying, yes, we've been able to destroy the Tigray people. What happened is now, now is that the Ethiopian government is now fighting the Amara militias, militants, and now fighting the Somali militants. So what happened is that the Ethiopian government, the Oromo that used to be anti-Ethiopia, because the president of Ethiopia now is now pro-Oromo, because he has his Oromo, they've now joined with the government of Ethiopia to be now be waging war against the, the, the Amara. So the Tigray that the government of Ethiopia killed two years ago have now joined the Ethiopian government to now be killing the Amara. Because the government promised them they were going to give them Western Tigray, which Amara people wanted to take over, which is very fatal for agriculture. You can see how complex the madness going on in Ethiopia for the past 200, 300 years. And I don't pray that the, the Nigeria gets into that level of mess. When we continue to kill each other, we continue to change and we continue to move from one case and, be, and we are going to be deceiving each, each other. That one way, one way or the other, our problem is going to be solved. When we can actually solve this problem. I've made an example of the European Union several times. But you see the peace in Europe. Europe is, is, is Europe used to be a place of bloodshed. Europe used to be like the Middle East in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Middle Ages. Europe used to be a place where might is right. Europe used to be a place where religious extremism used to be the order. Europe used to be a place where they used to burn witches. Europe used to be a place if you criticize the Pope, your tongue will be cut out. Europe used to be a place where if you publish any scientific book and say the art is round, they will sentence you to death. Like Galileo Galileo. That was what Europe used to be. But you know what changed Europe? What changed Europe was First World War and Second World War when they saw that they have the capacity to destroy each other. And I don't think they've learned enough lesson. That's why they are using Ukraine, the Ukraine-Russia war. They've, 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 they've gotten more relaxed. Anyway, America is the one using them to destroy um, Russia. It's one creating that. Because if America was on the European continent, I don't think America will instigate that crisis in Ukraine and be supporting Russia and Ukraine to be free waging war against Russia. It's not affecting them. So what am I trying to say? Europe had to go to a world war, first world war and second world war, where over 150 million people perished. 150 million people is equivalent, is equivalent to close to 500, 600 million people in 2024. Look at that level before you can buy, look at the number of bullets you are going to, bullets and machines you are going to manufacture to kill 500 million people. When the, when the, Nazi Germany were exterminating the Jews. They did not have enough bullets to kill the Jews they put in the concentration camp. 
What did they do? They had to invent gas chambers. They built factories where human beings were being killed. So as to make killing people faster. So that was what happened. So Europe had to, had to go to this bloody length for them to understand the principle of self-determination, the principle of federalism, the reason why ethno-linguistic federalism is the, how you build a multi-ethnic state and a multi-ethnic continent. Should Africa go to this level before, should Nigeria go to this level before we learn this bitter truth? Should Nigeria get to this level? Should we be creating Asari Togdokubo Tompolo warlords because of government irresponsibility? Ever since the assassination and the killing of Ken Saruwa, nothing has been done to pacify the Ogoni people till this current moment. It's a frozen conflict. Shell cannot, dare not go into Ogoni. Shell, they are not going to Ogoni to tap any crude oil and gas. In Ogoni today, in River State, and that place is blessed with humongous oil and gas deposits. Nigeria just moves around, around as if nothing has happened. That's why we are speaking at this time, because for the first time, we have somebody with almost the soul of our lower in Asso Rock that will listen to us. Because we have, we don't want our youth to go and fight any wars. We don't want our youth, our futures to be used as meat grinders in any brutal confrontation in Nigeria. We can't continue this way. The country with so much internal contradictions. Nigeria has been fighting its Islamic fundamentalism for the past 15 years. Religious extremism. There should have been a proper national policy to curb anybody preaching his religious extremism on social media. Has Nigeria done that? Go to Facebook, see all these small, small affairs. Pastors, say no sort of rubbish on social media. Because we need to speak the truth. How we are going to curb money coming from some countries that is fueling extremism in the north and across Nigeria? How do we curb people using Christianity as a form of political tool in Nigeria? How we, these are the things we need to solve. Nigeria's problem is beyond how much is the price of Gadi. Nigeria's problem is beyond that. And that has been proven to be correct. Nigeria's problem is beyond how much is the price of bread. Anybody telling you the problem of Nigeria is yeah, how much is the price, price of Gary is deceiving you. Nigeria has a civilization problem. It has a social, cultural problem. It has a foundational problem. Nigeria has an identity problem. It's confused. It does not know maybe it's a Christian country. It doesn't know maybe it's a Muslim country. It does not know maybe it's a secular country. It does not know maybe it's a theocratic country. It does not know maybe it should adopt Hausa. It does not know maybe it's a to it adopt Yoruba. It does not know maybe it is a unitary system country. It does not know maybe it's a federal country. It's confused. That's why a lot of crazy people want to bring different ideologies to destroy it. A lot of crazy people within it. Where they've turned empire building into nation building. That's why we need to restructure Nigeria. It's extremely important. And we hope by next week, we are surely going to expand it. And hopefully, maybe we should talk about the APC restructuring agenda for Nigeria. Let's discuss. Let's discuss. 
Because all these things we are talking here, saying here, you think the political and the, the political and traditional elites do not have an understanding? They have an understanding of what we're talking about. But there's some people that are benefiting from the destruction of the bloodshedding of Nigeria. Nigerians. All this restructuring does not pay them. They prefer to be collaborating with Chinese and, and foreign machineries to becoming, creating, building illegal mines and, and be taking over illegal mines and be turning Nigeria into, into, into another Somalia. It breaks my heart that a lot of Nigerians, especially people from the South, have been brainwashed. Share your bars. They don't even understand what to fight for anymore. I hope this generation will not will not will not burn this. And to the older generation listening to me, I'm talking about the generation of Baba Tinubu, President Bonamé Tinubu. This is my advice for you. If you do not fix this country before you go back to your ancestors, this the coming generation behind you will burn down this country. You can see this, you can see the way they talk. They did not witness the military. They did not suffer under the military. They do not have the, the historical and moral consciousness and value system to understand what Nigeria is. They will destroy, the, they will burn down Nigeria. They do not know that some boundaries should not be crossed in Nigeria. They don't know. Because they need money. Everything to them is cruise and money. I want my lady that by Nigeria. I want madly that are asking for state of origin to be cancelled. These are lunatics in the corridors of power, and they are the activists with the biggest loudspeakers. Why the rest of us are busy pursuing our different? Uh, we want to become PhDs. We want to become doctors. We want to become nurses, scientists. These lunatics have taken over the social media space. Hundred thousand followers. 50,000 followers to be preaching rubbish. And they will end up doing what are going in Rosie did, which is to turn the up country upside down. And millions of people are to go and billions of people started open the Pandora box. If that happens, Nigeria will not have the second chance. And we are going to lose. We missed the first industrial revolution in the 19th century. We missed the first, second, third industrial revolution. We missed the fourth industrial revolution. The world is talking about hey, hi, and everything at um, um, artificial intelligence, renewable energy. We are still going to miss the fifth, fifth industrial revolution. The world is not waiting for any one of us. The world is not waiting for us. Why some people are living even on earth, some people will continue to wallow in poverty. Maybe some people have not gone to countries like Central Africa Republic. The worst state in Nigeria, the worst state, let me look at the worst states, maybe Zanfara. The most, okay, the most backward state in Nigeria is far more advanced than, than the capital. Bangui, Bangui, the capital of Federal or Central African Republic. Are you adored anybody now? Those ones will continue to live in the seventh, in the in the seventh century. Why some people are planning to conquer the universe? That's the way the world works. There's nothing called there's nothing called globalization. There is nothing called equality. There is no equality in terms of economic and medical access, social access in the world. It is impossible. Except you fix your country, you fix your continent. 
How do we fix Nigeria without federalism? Go and tell them in Zamfara they should stop having, they should stop Sharia law. Simple. No president can dare tell them that. And you cannot tell them, it's like telling people not to be who they are because it's built on Islamic civilization. But it is, it is in Nigeria, one ethnic group from the Southeast will be rewriting the history of somebody in the Southwest. Does that make sense? In order to gain, in order to expand, in order to gain undue political leverage, one ethnicity from the North Central will be rewriting the history of another ethnicity in the South South in order to think you can conquer and expand that kind of a place. That's not a country. It's not a country. We need to talk, tell ourselves the truth. And have this conversation, proper conversation about Nigeria. All right, some people came up state. They might want to say so, I'll be, so I had to go there and you know further expansiate. Unfortunately, I would have done this if there was no break. I would have even run dead up the room because it's four hours on dots now. So we need to we need to educate our youth, especially the Yoruba youth, because Yoruba youth are the biggest educated illiterates within the Nigerian space. And they are the people, their forefathers, wrote down every road map to make Nigeria great. Awolawa wrote 16, more than 16 books. And in these 16 books, Awolawa wrote what you need to do to make Nigeria great. Everything is listed. If you go and read, listen, read Awolawa's books and you know about history, you are going to know that this man is a prophet. Everything he said is coming to pass. But, the, but these Yoruba youths, that their own forefathers have done the job, the fews are not readers. They are in entertainment, social media influencing, traitors, treacherous to their own people. They will even be insulting a whole Nobel Prize winner. The Jews used to pride themselves in our by test time, even in when their people win Nobel Prize. It is a Yoruba youth that is selling, selling Amala and Begiri that has access to Twitter and Facebook that have been insulting a Nobel Prize winner in literature, the pride of Africa on social media. And he's saying rubbish. That is, that is the kind of society we built. How we think about is money, money, dressing nice, looking good, when we have decadent youths. Decadent youths. That is why some ethnicities now have the gut to be challenging the rights of the Yoruba people to be Yoruba in Nigeria. They are even challenging the rights of Yoruba people to protect their economic, political, and social space within Nigeria. Can you question the right of Aousa Fulani to control their space in the Northwest without your head being on the pole? That is how decadent we've become as a people. We are going to get it right. I can see the signs that our political elites are seeing the reality. When was the last time we had a Southwest meeting? Like they are saying, let us chat a way forward. You don't see those, such a thing for the past six, seven years. Because intentionally, some people were destroying the Hawaiian, the Awolawa philosophy, and destroying the political currency of the Yoruba people, which is the Yoruba identity. Islam unites the core north. Catholicism unites the southeast. It is Yoruba identity that unites the Yoruba of North Central, Yoruba of Southwest, and the Yoruba of South South. It's our Ile Ifa history. It's our civilization that unites us across ethno-linguistic lines. Religion doesn't unite the Yoruba people. We don't have religion to unite us. That is why the Yoruba first does not discuss religion.
Islam does not unite the Yoruba people. Christianity does not unite. It is Yoruba. So for you not to talk about your Yoruba identity as a Yoruba person, you are doing us a great damage. Because what is the connection between a Yoruba man and a Yoruba, a Yoruba Christian and a Yoruba Muslim? It's your Yoruba identity. For anybody to tell you not to talk about it, is for they are telling you to go extinct as a people. I'm going to stop here. And um, the next 10 minutes we wrap up. Uh, should I moderate the more um, so that I can call? Okay, Judah. Okay, let yeah, me just please, stop here. Please moderate. Please moderate. Hey, Judah, can you speak? Two minutes. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever time it is, afternoon here. So um, I've listened to quite a few things people have said there, and that's very wonderful. But what I just believe that as the youths come together, or if we even come together, the most important thing for our success is the change of that, uh, that unitary system of government, that constitution, that 1999 constitution. No matter what we do as youths, no matter how the Yorubas come together, no matter anything anybody does, even let the Igbos come, no matter what, everybody will fail as long as you are, you are still standing on that 1999 constitution because that constitution makes everybody stateless it's just a, it's an advanced constitution from the 1979 one they are still the same thing it just puts power it puts power to a group of demons that will continue just ruling because whatever you get into that spot you become a demon before the 2023 elections i remember i said it clearly i said whoever wins i don't care Atiku, Obi, or Tinum, whoever wins, as long as you become president and you preside over Nigeria with that 1999 constitution, you will fail. I don't care who you are. That constitution has to be changed. The closest we can get back to, to success is to go back to the 1963 Republican constitution to be moderated and to be shaped into a federal system because people are shouting regionalism. A lot of people will not buy it. Each state should be independent of itself. Each state should be supposed to be each state is a country within a bigger nation. Each state should have control of its resources, of its wealth, of its everything it has. And then you give a percentage to the federal government, just the way America does. Because say in regionalism, you want us to go back to parliamentary system, which I don't think is feasible now. But if you want success as a race, as a tribe, the youth need to come together to demand from our legislators, people who voted in, that we need to change that constitution. Not what they're trying to do. What they're trying to do is still a scam. Because they're not doing, they're not bringing the people closer, they're not bringing the people involved. The closest to that is the Jonathan 2014 Constitution Amendment. I wish that man had implemented that that uh, arrangement i wish he had done it but he never did so for now that's just all i have to say thank you very much let me quickly chip thank something you. in mr judah we have to be careful with the jonathan confirm there is one clause in that confirm which is actually a scam that was smuggled in i'm sure Aaron knows this that is the removal of state of origin any agreements, and I'm skeptical with this uh, youth conference or whatever they want to do. I pray that whoever is going to be part of that conference, there are people that really understood the problem of Nigeria and understood the world better to put in the proper recommendation as opposed to some kind of fake thing. Anytime you're saying that you should get rid of state of origin and you are, you are putting that in the constitution, just know that it is the same thing. They're just repackaging is the same uh, unitary without respect to to anything without uh, intention for true progress to come in. Because as long as you say you want to get rid of state of origin, you still don't want peace. You want to continue to cause um, conflicts. Uh, that's what that that's what that means. So I just want to tell us we need to be careful. And I'm pretty sure the same thing is in the APC manifesto they also want to get rid of state of origin so 
That's why all these documents. They, it's, 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 it's up to. No, I'm coming. It's it is a, up to. You them. know. It's all of them. It is all of their manifesto, including even Labour Party. So let me just stop. They don't. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There are some sections in Nigeria, and that we don't need to hide it. The Southeasterners, people that belong to the Inandazikwes, which is the major political ideology in the Southeast, and um, some um, people from the North, Core North, not even the Amodubelo Core North. There's some people in the Core North, the CPC wing of the Core North who want state of origin to be removed. Why? Because a lot, they believe so that they are people that are nomadic. The Southeast, one way or the other, are nomads who go all over Nigeria, you know, trading everywhere. It's a form of nomadism. Economic program, trade nomadism. And the Northwest, the North, Connaught, where they are pastoral nomads who want the rights of their people to be given equal political and economic power, like the indigenous people. We know that's conflicts. That's a conflict. That's conflict. That's it. That is a recipe for future bloody wars in Nigeria. Because there is no way, the only place where you remove state of origin is where you exterminate the indigenous people. Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand, Argentina, Chile, Brazil, all these countries that have abolished indigenous rights, the indigenous people were wiped out. So anybody saying you want, you cannot um, be speaking English and be read, uh, use English language, patriotism, all those rubbish they talk about to destroy the indigenous rights of people to, to control their space unchallenged. It's impossible. Even with the amongst Yoruba people, Ijebu people will still want to be in control in Ijebu Ode. They will not want to hand over their space over to all your people. It's common sense. If uh, people will still want to be in charge of uh, Ife, not uh, Ijesha people. Ijesha people will still want to be the number one. The Ijesha people do, will not want to be in Elisha, and it is the Badan people that are controlling them economically, politically, socially. That's slavery. In the name of one Nigeria. Talk class, or you now bring somebody from outside to take over their space over time. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. The NYC has not has failed in its work in doing any form of integration of Nigeria because that's not the way integration are done. You don't lie to people that they are one when we know there are differences, there are histories. So anybody putting it into that place is up for people to argue. And we know the people that want it. So this is basically from two major regions in Nigeria. And from that two major regions is some sections in that region. The Southeast, Zikis, you know, which Peter will be represents. The, the, the Azikwe um, supremacist ideology of uh, melting pot destroyed the ethnic identities in Nigeria. And from the CPC, hardcore CPC wing. Amadou Bello will never subscribe to such rubbish identity, ideology. And you know the Middle Belt will rather die than allow anybody coming from Sudan to be claiming equal rights with them. That was what led to the problem, the, the problem we have in Justy now. So we understand where this is going. The Yoruba people are not allowed going to are not going to allow you both to be claiming uh, equal rights with us in Lagos or, or, or you want to the job people 
I'm going to allow Igbos to be claiming equal rights with them in um, in uh, in uh, Bayosa. Or Shekiris are going to allow Ijo people to take over their take over the entire world by mass migration. It's not going to happen. It is never going to happen. So there are problems all across. Anybody trying to bring that into Nigeria, and we know people that are doing people that people that did the 1966 coup and the unification decree are capable of doing anything in Nigeria. And they are going to be the biggest losers because Nigerians are going to revolt. Every things we are discussing here is that we don't want bloodshed. We don't want bloodshed. That's what we are here to talk about. Because Nigeria is a very look at the look at what happened. They said they want to bring IDP camp to they just said it on so. To National Open University in Nemo State. What happened the following night? They went to go and burn down the university. Is that a country where you want to destroy state of origin? It's madness on steroids. Anybody conceiving it, anybody supporting it is a madman. Anybody talking about it is a mad person. Because it doesn't happen in in India that is partisan, that is multi-ethnic. It does not happen in 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 uh, in, uh, in uh, 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 this country. Why do you think South Sudan is in a state of war after getting independence from Sudan? The Dinkas wanted a melting pot and a unitary decree because they had the majority population and they were controlling power. That's why South Sudan is in a mess till now. They want to control the oil and gas. They want to control the positions. And they'll be shouting on one South Sudan and patriotism. These are people that fought bloody war against the Arabs to fight against local colonization. They got into South Sudan, destroyed any form of federalism in order to be controlling the country. Everything we are doing to ourselves in Africa is self-inflicted. Every damage we are doing to ourselves in Nigeria is self-inflicted. Because some the greed of some ethnic nations in Africa is beyond remedy. So we are going to discuss this. That's why we are that's why a lot of people are afraid that we are educating our youth. They are afraid that we are educating our youth. And we are not going to stop educating our youth because we don't want our youth to cause to 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 make the mistakes that the Palestinians made. The Palestinians of 1920, 1930 were busy selling lands. They created genocide for the discarnate generation of Palestinians who are now being killed, being assassinated, left, right, and center trying to use guns to achieve what they could have used common sense to achieve 100 years ago. We know history, history, has, history justified our law to be right. And people like T.O. Benson and all these people were, and Macaulay were, 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 were proven to be, to be, to be, to be, to be wrong. As if we was, has been proven to be wrong. That was a problem to Nigeria. Amadou Bello was right in some of his many postulations. Aola was right, Azikwe was proven to be wrong. That is why Nigeria is what it is. Why you don't teach history? So what kind of political leaders are you going to groom? That's why we have a lot of activists. They just want to protest about everything. They are always angry. They are rude. They are on court and all international activism, not any. And ignorant. And ignorant. They are very arrogant. They are rude. They talk anyhow. They insult people to not to be their father because they don't know history. They only react when things don't happen, when things don't go their way. And those kind of people will burn down the country. It's a matter of time. 
no youth conference will solve it because you are you these people you are talking about they do not have the mental capacity and the mental rigor to explain the problems of nigeria they are just a kind you know it's like you gave much uh, double barrel to five year old six year old they have the mouthpiece the the platform to sort of rubbish and they don't know what nigeria is many of them have never been to Zamfara. they don't know they've never been to kano they don't understand they don't know the history of sudan they don't know what's happening in in in, in central african republic where Christians and Muslims are wiping out each other. They don't know. Even though what happened in Central African Republic is less than 15, 10 years ago. They don't know. They don't understand how, why Switzerland is Switzerland. They don't know why Belgium is Belgium. They don't know why, how United Kingdom is practicing regional system of government. That people are bombing and killing, massacring, creating terrorist groups in the United Kingdom because they want true federalism in the United Kingdom. People don't know about the Good Friday Agreement in, 19, in 1998 in the United Kingdom. So we are going to create a mess and we are going to be calling the military. Oh, military, go in, go in there and start killing a certain problem. Look at the issue about the, um, that happened earlier this year. More than Nigerian, 20 Nigerian soldiers were killed in Delta. The fight between Yorubo and Ijo people about land in that area of Okumagba and all those places has been there for the past 30, 40 years. If it was a proper, sensible, and reasonable society, shouldn't we have been able to call the border, um, you know, and be able to solve it? But we will never do that. We will never do that. Because they are vested interests. Each side believes, some people believe they can use the military, buy up some people, and take over other people's lands. So this is the madness that we have. That even, that even makes, that even makes restructuring, um, they don't even understand what restructuring is all about. I was speaking, to, I said something on my page a few months ago that, that the Yoruba people of Mokoja, <coughs> that the Yoruba people, and somebody there was cursing me. Ah, any Yoruba people in. <coughs> that any Yoruba people in Kogi, they are not Anas. I was like, ah, ah. What sort of thinking is this? God will help us, but Tinobu has the opportunity to save Nigeria. He has the opportunity. I don't care what people say about him, the economic situation, everything is going to be fine. But he has the opportunity to save Nigeria. Can he change that constitution for us back to the 1960? Three constitution. It is yeah. a it is a God. I'm coming, sir. When that is what we need. That's what we need. We we need to be okay. free. We want to be free, sir. That's all. Every nation, every state, from Delta you State can't. to or your state to Katsina State. That's what we need. If you get that, not everybody, not everybody. they can't do that by fiat. They can't just do that by fiat. Can do that by fiat. Thank you. So I think we have to. It's been less. Um, it's been a nice time talking, the host. Um, I think we have to wrap up the room. And hopefully next week, we spend four hours thirty minutes on dot. Um, we've had like three spaces, so you can check. It has been breaking up. Um, next week is going to be more organized. Hopefully, we are not going to have uh, intermittent uh, network issues. We really want to thank everybody that participated today. May Almighty God continue to be with us. Host, do you have anything to say before we wrap up? Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, we, we, sorry, Otumba of somewhere. Sorry, I can't 
bring you up again wherever you are. Join us tomorrow for the book reading. It's very important. Um, it's usually just about 60 minutes to 90 minutes session. We're reading all the Obafemi Olo books and all that. So please uh, join us tomorrow for the book reading. I think otherwise, uh, that's pretty much it. Nothing more. Oh, that's all.